Okay, hi, and welcome back. Uh, this is going to be part two of assembling the RepRap Wilson 2. Um, this step, I'm going to assemble the X axis, and there's relatively few parts in this step. So I have here uh, one of our stepper motors, and I have the uh, X in stop switch. I have two uh, 370 millimeter long. Uh, 10 millimeter diameter smooth rods and the plastic parts for the x-axis um, and I've got bearings and other fasteners here that we'll need. So the first thing that I've done um, is I've already placed the pulley on the uh, shaft of the stepper motor so that's that goes on just like you see it and the thing that I did here is I took the uh, in stop, the x-axis in stop and the wires from the motor and I bundled them together uh, into this um, bundle and you can I recommend that you do it if you have uh, some of this this is a uh, plastic sheath uh, expandable uh, sh uh, cable sleeve and the motor wire is going to be quite a bit longer but at least get it long enough that the uh, in stop wire uh, pokes out here and that's going to make it a lot easier to keep these together uh, later. It's not required and you could always uh, put a, a cable wrap on there later. But this is how I've chosen to do it. So the first thing uh, that I want to do in this step is I want to get these smooth rods and the X-ins, uh, the X-end pieces, these two, and I want to check and see if these rods fit smoothly into these before I get any further along. Um, and these do, and they're fine. If they, if you can't get this rod into here, then uh, before you go any further, you want to, you know, maybe uh, clean this out with a, a drill. You'd need a 10 millimeter drill bit, or it might just have a little bit of, you know, plastic around the edge that you need to take a um, hobby knife or something and clean up. Um, but make sure that you can get these in. The, the, the best uh, fit for these is a little bit loose uh, because we want to be able to slide the X ends a little bit in and out uh, when we mount this onto the onto the printer. So, but for now, just check and make sure that that's okay. Then get uh, we're going to need linear bearings, more LM10 uh, UU linear bearings, and we're going to put two of these into each X end like this. Uh, they'll only insert from the bottom side that has this flange, the top side, or rather that doesn't have the flange, the top side does to hold them in place. And then the X carriage itself also then gets four linear bearings. And in that case, you can slide them in from either side. But get, just get all those into place. If here's another note about fit. If these, if the bearings don't want to go in for whatever reason uh, nicely into your plastic pieces, then get a C clamp that's used like for woodworking, something that can push evenly. Um, and you just, just like let's say. We get it in this far and we can't get it in any further, then just put a C-clamp here and then tighten, tighten, tighten and just press it into place. Uh, you don't want to, hammering is not the way you want to go, you want to go with some sort of press. Uh, you can also just use the palm of your hand against the table. But Okay, now the X-axis has its own tensioner just like the Y-axis did, it serves the same exact purpose and you, you assemble it the same exact way. You get a um, longer M3 screw and an M3 nut and thread that through the end just until the screw comes to this inside slot. Then get the two piece bearing guide, belt guide and the bearing and snap that into place and then an M4 by 20 millimeter screw and an M4 
for lock nut. And just tighten that enough so that the lock nut's engaged and uh, this can spin. And then the tensioner goes into this end, the idler end. And there's a, a notch here that, that is an addition uh, to this design so that I can get a little bit more uh, travel out of the x-axis. It allows the tensioner to get a little bit closer. And so get another uh, M4 screw and just a regular nut, M4 nut. Okay, so then that tensioner, uh, same as the, X, the one for the Y axis, should slide in and out just a little bit like that. Now, but well, the bearing does not want to stay in there. Uh, each of the X ends now has a mount for the uh, lead screw nut. So the lead screws that I'm using, which look like this, uh, it's just an eight millimeter um, lead screw, and it comes with this brass nut. You can see it fits real nicely on there. Anyway, uh, each of these brass nuts, one needs to go onto each X end, and so that's what this spot here is for. Insert them from this side, like this, and then there's four mounting holes, uh, but I can't imagine why you would need to use all four, so I just take two um, M3 by 14 millimeter screws. Just pick two of those holes. Put an M3 nut on the top. Like that, and then I'll just repeat that uh, on the opposite one and then do the same for the other X end. Okay, now let me let me say something about this X motor end. On the back side here is this little uh, piece that sticks out, um, and what this is for is to hold an adjustment screw for the Z end stop. Now this is actually a feature from the Wilson TS uh, that is replaced with the use of auto bed leveling on the Wilson 2. However, I've kept this feature here. Um, so and everything will line up appropriately so that if you want to fall back to using the traditional Z in stop you can use this and if you do that what you would do is get an M3 uh, 30 millimeter screw and a spring this is a one inch spring and you put it down through this slot so that the screw sticks out to the bottom and put an M3 nut on this side Now what that'll let you do is now when you tighten this screw and it compresses the spring, the bottom side of this uh, screw will go down and this is what would hit your uh, Z end stop switch. It would just strike the, switch, the top of the switch. And I'm going to leave this on my part uh, in case I have an issue with the bed leveling and I want to uh, have that ability to fall back to something a little bit simpler um, but for the most part we're just going to ignore this part and you don't have to assemble it if you are committed to uh, bed, the servo mounted in stop for bed leveling. 
Now get your stepper motor and we're going to mount that to the motor end so it goes right here. We'll need four or three M3 by 14 millimeter screws and turn the motor so that the uh, wires here are going to come off from the bottom side like this. This is the bottom. Okay. And then we'll mount the end stop right here to this little arm that sticks out using two uh, M2 by 16 millimeter screws. And these you want to make sure you insert the screws from uh, the side that's where the smooth rods are going to, where these round holes are. Uh, otherwise the length, the extra length of the screw is going to stick in the wrong direction and it's going to be a problem later. So do it like this. If your M2 screws were just the perfect length, you wouldn't have to worry about that, but I'm trying to use the same length everywhere just to keep things simple. Okay, and then just like we had on our Y end stop next to the, where the motor and the uh, end stop were, on this end there's a little feature that's meant to help with strain relieving the cables. And it's right here on this bottom corner. So since I have my uh, motor and my end stop wires all bundled together. It's just one bundle, but if they're separate, then just put them both here, lay them against this edge, and then sorry, I got this. I got this backwards. They they should come forward, and then the, the wires actually need to go to the back side of the printer, so like this. So you want to loop. Sorry if I confused the situation there. It'll make more sense when it's when this is in place. So the, so the idea is that now any uh, stress on this will be taken here where the, in, where the zip tie is. And now these wires uh, won't be under any sort of strain. Now there's another two spots here that you can choose from to give a little bit even more um, uh, help to keep these wires to the end stop from getting uh, tangled or snagged in anything. So I'll put one more here. And that's going to really help. See now we, we have this whole assembly. Um, we can even hang it by these wires and nothing gets pulled. Uh, nothing gets stressed. So that's that. So now, uh, starting then with this motor end again, we'll get our two smooth rods and we'll slide those in to these two mounting holes and then get your X carriage. And so the uh, lead screw nuts are the top of the X axis. This is the top side and our X carriage 
It has this handy little arrow embossed into it to show us which way it goes up. And this side, the flat side, should go towards you uh, from the front of the x-axis. So slide that on to the two rods, just like that. And then the idler end should be turned around like this, same way, so that the uh, lead screw nuts are both in the on the top, facing towards the inside, towards each other, and then slide that slide that into place. Okay, just like that. Now you'll notice we haven't attached. We haven't even talked about attaching the belt yet, and that's because we we don't want to attach the belt until this assembly is actually in place, uh, because the belt tension. Uh, depends a lot on uh, how far out on these rods these ends go and we want the uh, smooth rods for the z-axis which go through here we want that to to be able to uh, get this just the right distance and then once we know that that's right putting the belt on is much easier so that's it for the x-axis for now um, we will finish the steps that need to be done on this later but for now we'll set this aside and we'll go ahead and, and dig into building the upright part of the frame uh, and then things will start to all come together. Be right back.